Welcome to Think Big with Dan and Kasim. Join host Dan Melnick and Kasim Masood as they explore big ideas, limitless possibilities, and engage with visionaries, entrepreneurs, and thought leaders who dare to dream big, get inspired, motivated, and find practical tips for personal growth. Think big, dream bigger, and ignite your potential. All right. Welcome back, everybody. Our guest today, Jennifer Weesey. Jennifer, it's really good to have, have you on. I appreciate you being here. And uh, can you tell us, first of all, where you're calling in from and what you do for a living with Be Free? For sure. So I am located in Noblesville, Indiana, the heartland, awesome. and uh, I am the founder and CEO of Be Free. That's amazing. I've actually spent um, almost four years in uh, Cincinnati and Ohio. So I, was, I actually went to Indiana pretty often, as a matter of fact. I don't know if I've ever came across your town, but I've definitely been in uh, that part of the country for a while. So that's awesome. Yeah, I guess I'm just curious. I mean, you know, tell us a little bit more about your background. Um, you know, I was reading a little bit on your you know, LinkedIn profile about kind of like your like big mission and why behind what you're doing with this bakery. But yeah, I guess just like fill us in a little bit like leading up to like when you created this brand and what you're trying to do with there. Oh, of course, I'd be happy to. So at the age of 48, I decided it was time to start a business. <laughs> Um, actually, I you know, I, uh, I really got into being a brand owner by solving a problem. And so owning a brand and um, creating a product for consumers was really not the original intent. That's that wasn't by design. And so I am the mom of four sons and one of our sons is on the autism spectrum. And so way back in 2008, we were looking for things that we could do to help support him. Um, he was newly diagnosed at that at that time. And it was foreign to us, uh, autism was, and we really didn't have really good positive information anyways. And so we ended up in Vancouver, British Columbia at an autism conference. And there we learned about gluten-free and how that could be impactful for people with autism. And that seemed reasonable to us. It seemed like something that we could get our hands around and we you know, would be happy learning something new in the kitchen. And so that's what we did. But on the way home, we stopped at Whole Foods and we bought every Thing in their little teeny tiny little section of gluten-free at that time. And although we were happy to find some things that were packaged gluten-free, most of it didn't sit very well with our family. It didn't taste good. It, it wasn't made with pure, simple ingredients. And therefore we just started, we, I say my mom and I, I enlisted her help in the kitchen and we just started recreating favorite family recipes to gluten and dairy-free. And um, the time was perfect for that time of experiment because 2007, 2008, people are really starting to look at food as their medicine. They're paying much closer attention to labels, to what's in their food and how is it affecting their body and their mind. And it was starting to get fashionable too in the media. It, you know, it was just kind of the hot thing being on a gluten-free diet. And also um, some professional athletes were using it to enhance their athletic performance. And so it was just, it was a really hot topic. And so we had already spent a little bit of time figuring things out. So we had kind of a little bit of a jump start into the a gluten free market in our area anyways, in the Midwest. And as most people know, the Midwest are kind of late adopters to, you know, new kind of popular kind of things. The Midwest can take a little bit extra time to kind of get there. But we did some farmers markets, got a really great confirmation from our community that people loved what we had. We sold out every week um, and people would cry. We would always would offer samples and people would cry tears of joy because they thought they would never be able to eat anything that tasted delicious again now that they've been on a gluten-free diet. And we changed that for them. So in 2010, I got really brave and gutsy and I started a business. And it was pretty much a one-girl show in the early days. But in 2014, my husband saw that I had something that could be scaled, that could be um, put in trucks and shipped all over the country. And so that's the direction that we took um, in, in 2014. And then we developed, you know, some a larger variety of products and more uh, flavors of our warrior snack mix that is kind of the hero product of our um, product offering right now. So those were kind of the early days. And and the why is, is because our son and there wasn't anything available in the marketplace that I felt good about feeding my family. So we created our own and then we just started knocking on doors and figuring things out. I don't come from a background of CPG or food. I have a fashion degree um, from Ball State University. And I just was a mom on a mission and I still am a, a mom on a mission. And that's really fueled me and it continues to fuel me and, and the heartbeat of our 
company is autism and specifically it's jobs and creating jobs for people with autism so that they have a better life so that we can be part of that positive change in people. And yeah. So uh, that's so amazing. Uh, it's such an amazing story. I really appreciate you sharing that. And uh, can you actually I'm, I'm fascinated by this uh, idea because it's not something I have heard of before, which is, um, you know, how a gluten free diet can be beneficial to you know people on the autism spectrum. So what did you kind of learn at that conference? And like, what do they kind of have to say about that? And why um, you know, maybe it can affect people on the autism spectrum, maybe a little bit more or maybe or just naturally more gluten sensitive? Yes, of course. So I'm always quick to say that I am not a scientist. I am not a doctor. I am not prescribing gluten free as a cure for anything. So um, gluten free, what we learned there and what continues um, to show um, itself is that gluten free is an inflammation. It's a way to lessen um, whole body inflammation. So that's really kind of the heart of why gluten-free can be positive effect on people with, with autism. It is, you know, pretty known that um, people with um, autism do or tend to have a heightened inflammation um, in their body. And if you just kind of think about it, if you have inflammation, pathways in your body are likely not working optimally. So maybe messages that are going to your brain are maybe not working as quickly or as optimally as they could with a lessened amount of um, inflammation. So that's kind of the very high, you know, like just very general way to kind of explain why it has shown to be helpful and supportive for people with autism and other kinds of inflammation issues as well, too. All kinds of autoimmune diseases um, carry a higher inflammation level in the body. And so um, gluten-free can be helpful um, in that respect as well. Yeah, I appreciate you sharing that because you know, autism visibility and uh, awareness is a big thing of mine. Personally, I grew up very close to, I don't know if you've ever heard of the Anderson Center for Autism in upstate New York. It is yeah. an incredible facility. I grew up at working in a restaurant that was like not even five minutes from there. And they always took their field trips over. They loved coming to the diner. And uh, yeah, I, I had a really amazing experience with that you know community of of young people coming from the Anderson Center all the time. So it's been a big, almost like passion project of mine. So any way I can give a platform to, you know, autism awareness in any way, uh, I really appreciate you being a part of that here as well. So no, it's amazing. It's such a great story. And I suppose, you know, now that you've obviously been in business almost 15 years, how has it kind of developed insofar as obviously your why behind it was from your own personal experience, having a son on the autism spectrum, uh, knowing that this could be beneficial to him? Is that something that you find is a big adopter from like some of your most like repeat customers? Is that a message that tends to get across? or as it kind of morphed into just a more kind of overarching gluten-free experience for people? I would say both. I would mm -hmm. say, but I will also say that when um, a couple of years ago, we did some rebranding on our packaging and we put a little blue um, button that says autism job. It's blue. It really stands out on our packaging. Um, and it's right on the front of our package. And we wanted to make sure that people that were interested in our product, number one, knew that it was gluten-free and all those other good attributes. But we really wanted people to be able to connect with, uh, with us on autism level as well, too, knowing that these are real people that stand behind this product. This is a real mom that has some experience raising a child with autism. Um, and we're all in this together, kind of a kind of a message. Um, so I would say that it's both. It is people that um, have experienced something similar or they're curious about out what could what could it look like you know if we decided to go gluten free you know just curiosity about the positive benefits of, of what that might be. And then just people of all different types of walks of life who either have celiac disease and need to eat gluten-free for those kind of reasons, or they're just curious, or they just feel, I don't know, they, their body just works better without gluten. So a whole variety of, of reasons. Yeah. And obviously, you know, gluten sensitivity and just kind of like, you know, lower gluten diets has always been just a topic of conversation, I feel like in the past few years. I think a lot of people have gluten sensitivities they don't even realize because they've never been diagnosed with celiac. So I know it's amazing. And I suppose I see you're selling online now. Um, is that so, something where you kind of is that kind of where you started when you like you know, originally brought this to market in a big way and started scaling was kind of selling online? Or were you more interested in getting maybe into like, a, like the more retail side of things? And I guess up to today, like what's kind of the breakdown between what you're doing online versus any like retail or grocery partnerships that you work with? Yeah, so I started knocking on doors first, knocking on brick and mortar doors. We do not have a standalone be free bakery that people can come to. And that's very intentional because from the beginning, we wanted to be that source of help and hope for people wherever they shop. And so we wanted to get our food out into retailers across the country, first in our own backyard, and then spreading out across state lines and, you know, um, coast to coast. So we start, I started that way. And then went to the e-com 
side of things. And I will say that COVID had a really big impact on why we decided to go a little deeper and and pay a little bit more attention because when everyone went home and they couldn't shop in the groceries, they went online and we weren't there. We were there, but we had a very, very faint existence. And so- It was like just by the grace of God that we survived COVID because of that and because people couldn't find us and we couldn't sell our product like we had normally been used to. And so not only that, but, you know, we were not considered an essential item. So even if we were in a grocery store shelf, we weren't being stopped because all those forces were going into other areas of the grocery. But so now we've paid a much higher attention to our e existence and our presence. And we recently have recreated our website so that it, it's refreshed, it's more elevated, it's more interactive, it's it's more storytelling too. I feel like it's, it's a lot more concise telling about who we are, why we do what we do, how people can connect with us and help support us and how we can just kind of keep that circle going. But our our in-store presence is much stronger, I think, because that's where we got started. And in-store presence is much um, stronger than our online presence. But we're getting there. You know, we're growing it. We're paying more attention to it. And we we have some work to do, but we it's, it's a stronger focus of ours. Yeah, no, I think it's a great perspective because I think during COVID, a lot of people realize that we're, you know, had all of their eggs kind of in the retail basket, especially if it was only with like, you know, one partner. You can realize mm-hmm. that can be taken away from you pretty fast. But yeah, so I, th- I think I, w- one of the pieces of advice I get on the podcast all the time from other CPG brand owners about, you know, just like what advice you'd give yourself or anybody starting out in this space is just like, you know, maintain and like you know, develop an omni-channel approach to what you're selling because you never know what's going to happen. It might be an economic thing. It might be another pandemic. Nobody knows now that we know what the reaction is going to be like next time something like that happens. Like who yeah. knows how those relationships are going to pan out, right? So exactly. uh, no, it's it, it's super fascinating. And um, I suppose on the online side, what have you kind of tried as far as like, you know, marketing efforts and things that you found a lot of success with? Uh, kind of like advertising or just like, you know, customer facing things that you do on the digital side, you know, seem to resonate most with people. Um, you know, we do a lot of collaborations with like-minded brands, and that is super effective. We found that that is a really great way to grow our exposure, you know, by by um, gaining those additional, uh, you know, interested consumers who like something. And people, quite honestly, um, they really appreciate that. They appreciate getting to know another brand that maybe we value because, you know, let's face it, we're trying to build trust, right? As a brand, as a brand owner, we're, we're trying to build trust trust and trying to grow that network of um, like-minded brands that we can all kind of collaborate with and really just share. So that's been super effective. Uh, Giveaways are super effective. And I would say specific influencers to specific brands, like say a Target influencer or a Whole Foods influencer, things like that. Those have been really super effective as well. Yeah, it's fascinating. And just going back to what you said before, I think, you know, as, as kind of just like a macro trend, I think across industries, people I think are looking to have a little bit more of a relationship to the things they're putting in their bodies as far as food, putting on themselves as far as, um, you know, any like ointments or even like hair care products and makeup and things. Um, so I think that resonance is really important. I'm not surprised to hear that you're kind of more like storytelling facing types of things seem to have like the most resonance, because I think at the end of the day, if people are you know going to go away from the just the most convenient thing, I think that's in reality what they're really looking for, you know, functionality and, you know, something that they can get behind and like almost act like as a customer, like a partner with this brand, happy to support, uh, not just because of the product is good, but the why behind as well, which you obviously have in a huge way, which is incredible. So no, that's awesome. And Jennifer, I know I mentioned uh, the one question I do always like to ask everybody that comes on the podcast. I always love the answers to this question. But I guess if you could go back to you know 2010, when you really got your start, you know, making these products and you know going through the iterations and development, uh, if you could go back to that time and give yourself any one piece of advice, if you were to start this business again, uh, what do you think that piece of advice would be? I think that it would be that things will take much longer than you anticipate and to be patient and to be kind to yourself. But you know, so I can set all the timelines that I want for myself and expectations of when I think this new account is going to come in or when, you know, I think this new product will be able to be ready for launch. And it's almost twice as amount of time as I think it will be. So I've learned that over the years and I've learned to be patient, to be kinder to myself 
and really to just build myself, build up a network of people around me that are believers and that are positive and supportive as well. Yeah, no, I think it's such good advice. And uh, I'm probably not super surprised to hear that's actually a very, very common answer I get to that question, which is just like, especially like really CPG forward brands, like understand it's going to take 10 times longer than like you could possibly imagine it's going to take. Uh, but I think that for CPG brands, you know, it might be unexpected, but I think that's actually a good thing. I think it gives you a really long roadmap to be able to get that direct feedback to really turn it into something that you know can scale before you start, you know, putting in the extra uh, investments and things like that and moving forward with different partnerships. So I think it's really good advice. And, you know, when you hear it a hundred times on a CPG podcast, <laughs> it's not like anecdotal evidence anymore. Right. So um, no, I really appreciate you being part of that conversation. Uh, I think it's a really important point for anybody listening to really understand before you get, you know, two feet in into something in CPG. It's uh, it's it's it can be a long roadmap. So and then I guess, Jennifer, one other thing I'm always I'm always curious about is, you know, if we were to speak a year from today, maybe where do you kind of see things as far as the brand, as far as um, any additional product developments you're looking to get into? Uh, what's kind of the next big thing for you guys over the next 12 months? Yeah, so we're um, looking at some new product innovation. So uh, new flavors of our Warrior Snack Mix, new little mini bars. Um, we're looking to add something with um, a higher protein level, something crunchy. We're, we're trying to be good listeners uh, to what our consumers say they want from us. And so those are some of the things that we're, we're going to be looking at in the near future. So Awesome. Very exciting. And um, I also just want to give you an opportunity, Jennifer, for anybody listening who maybe might be interested in connecting with you, maybe on a business partnership sense, or just wants to see where they can find and try these products. Uh, what's the best way to stay in touch with you all and um, you'll define you guys in store? Oh, of course. So you can go to our website, which is befreegf.com. Uh, and there's a store loca locator. Um, you can find all kinds of really interesting information about our company and just other ways that you can help support. And then you can reach out to me. Uh, you can find me on LinkedIn. I'm at Jennifer Weese. Uh, on LinkedIn and um, yeah, pretty easy to catch. So I love I love the connection and um, definitely would welcome anyone who wants to reach out to me. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Jennifer, I just want to say thank you again for being here and coming on and sharing a bit about your expertise and your story. Uh, such an awesome and inspiring story. I really appreciate you sharing it. And just want to wish you the best of luck and continue success in everything you're doing. As I mentioned, you know, autism awareness and uh, visibility is something that's very near and dear to my heart. So I really appreciate personally what you're doing. And yeah, really appreciate you coming on and really looking forward to staying in touch as well. Oh, me too. Thank you so much. Thanks, Pleasure. Jennifer. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, everybody.